Hello, today I'd like to talk to you about a manuscript that I've been working on for going on 20 years now. I've been trying to put everything that I know, everything I've learned, everything I've experienced in my scholarly endeavor to learn as many languages as I can, as, as well as I can over the course of my life, into text form where I can go into great detail and, 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 and breadth and depth at the same time about many categories. I cover things such as linguistic taxonomy, looking at questions like what is language, with a capital L, not just from a philological, but uh, from a philosophical point of view, and looking at what, what a language is, uh, not just from a genetic or geographic standpoint, but from other perspectives as well, uh, how vital languages are, or how fulfilled they are, how, how they've been used in, in various functions. And I recognize that uh, we learn languages as objects of study, but I also go into depth about suggesting that it, it can be quite helpful truly to conceptualize of languages as living entities with which you build relationships. So talking about the different kinds of relationships that one can build with languages and Obviously, they go into great detail about the, the methods and materials that one can use, the reasons for learning languages, the, the motives and motivation that you uh, can bring to the task and ways to strengthen this and to build new motives. Um, that's one of the main factors that influences your success. I look at lots of other factors as well, particularly those that are um, under your control and that you can also uh, improve and strengthen as well. Um, talk a lot about different ways to discipline yourself and structure your life to, to be a successful scholar and how to um, build in other types of activities. This kind of scholarship is, is an overweeningly mental exercise. And so I give a lot of thought to different types of exercise, uh, spiritual exercise and physical exercise, and musical and artistic exercise that can uh, balance and complement this, uh, making it a more holistic endeavor um, I give a lot of thought to what it means to know a language and how many languages you can know and how you can maintain and use languages over the course of your life and continue to uh, improve of them. I draw not just on my own experience, but I uh, do a lot of investigation of the biographies of, of language and, and scholars of the past and look at lessons that uh, we can learn from them. Uh, for those who are interested in sort of lists of coherent groups of languages that it makes sense to, to learn together, uh, I've got lots of those uh, for various purposes and suggestions for systematic uh, orders in which to learn them that make the most sense. Um, learning has always been, for me, a, a, a task of learning how to, to read books in, in languages. And so um, I talk a lot about the classic texts that can be read in various languages and give lists there as well of uh, orders in which it makes sense to, to learn and, and read books in various languages and how to systematically develop your abilities to um, read languages diachronically over the course of your life. So um, in many of these areas, I sort of have a sort of a ninefold layer of analysis, three main categories and then three subcategories for each category. So, um, yeah, I've been working on this for decades, um, not continuously. Uh, that's one reason it's taken such a long time. Another reason it's taken a long time is aside from the being maybe very ambitious, trying to get everything to, to one place um, and is that I, I, I have called this at times the path of the polyglot and the uh, other times the principles of polyliteracy and wondered which title I should choose. And I think honestly, I can probably use both and need another one. I've probably got enough material for uh, three books here, not just one, um, but it needs a lot of editing. Uh, and so um, what kind of person am I editing this for? Who would be interested in this? Well, if you're still listening to me, you're probably interested. Um, if I conceptualize my target reader, it's going to be probably a younger version of myself, somebody still in the first couple of decades of life who's realized that you've got a scholarly heart, uh, that you were put on this planet to read and learn and study, uh, particularly in the areas of the humanities, literature and history and philosophy and theology, and that to get at texts 
Uh, in the original, you need to learn as many languages as you can, as well as you can over the course of your life. So you feel a, a vocation to become a professional language learner. And so that you can do that, you realize you have the, the, the duty and the obligation to be a teacher to help others uh, do this as well and to encourage them and, and, and aid them. So probably your ideal career aspiration might be to be something like a, a university professor. That's in the main target, but bullseye target has a big circle around that as well. And I definitely want have uh, aimed this to be for people in that circle who are saying, well, I don't feel a vocation to be a full-time language learner, but it's certainly my passionate avocation. I'm, I'm a serious amateur. I have some other uh, career and other things that I'm doing with my life, but I, I also have those same goals of learning as many languages as I can, as well as I can over the course of my life, probably for reading. And, you know, I have different goals, but uh, maybe some people there are inspired by the um, suggestion that I've made several times in the past that uh, any human being who's exposed to, say, lots of languages when they're young can pick up about half a dozen of them. And so if you have not done that, but you would like to take that on as sort of a lifetime intellectual challenge to teach yourself a half a dozen languages or so, uh, the systematic tips and advice and uh, things about learning order here are, are designed to help you as well. So I'm thinking of people who really want to do this in a serious fashion, the kind of person who doesn't just exercise doing some physical exercise, but maybe gets ready to, to run a marathon, or the kind of person that doesn't just play a musical instrument for um, just for fun, but does work on improving their, their scales and the like. So a person who doesn't feel that vocation to be a monk, but nonetheless uh, has carved out an hour or two a day for spiritual activity. So if you've carved out an hour a day for this kind of mental language learning for the course of your life, then I think that this is probably of great interest to you as well. <clears throat> um, in a larger category, I hope that this is of interest to, well, people like applied linguists now, like Rebecca Oxford and uh, Ulrika Jensa Schmidt, who are interested in exploring what other types of more normal or sane learners can learn from the, the, the passionately obsessed language learners. Um, people like uh, Dina Nukilicheva, uh, who are now trying to make <clears throat> polyglottery a, a, a field of academic uh, investigation. So uh, mentioning polyglots, there are m most polyglots probably don't share most of my presuppositions and, and main interests. And so you wouldn't want to take everything that I say wholesale. But if this is definitely your field of interest, then you're welcome to come and pick and choose and, and, and take uh, take take what is of value to you. So these are the three main categories that I can see. Um, and then the, uh, maybe, who knows? I mean, I think most of the people who read The Art of War are not generals. Uh, people can get uh, value out of different types of books. And if you're interested in a probably pretty quirky uh, count of uh, obsessive quest for excellence in a certain field of life, uh, then this might be uh, interesting, perhaps even amusing to you as well. <clears throat> so uh, I've mentioned that I'm in the final editing phases of this now. And what has helped me more than anything else uh, in previous editing phases is when I could teach this as a lecture course in linguistics at a university where I happen to be teaching. Uh, but at that stage, even though it was extremely helpful, the students that I had available to me were not in the categories that I just enumerated, particularly not in the first or the second one. Uh, but now uh, I'm very happy to say in my virtual academy where I'm currently able to help numbers of, um, of really interesting people uh, develop their abilities to, to read and discuss literature in French and German and Spanish, to converse in Latin and to, uh, to read and talk about great books, uh, um, that I think I do have uh, enough numbers of people there that I can offer this now, kind of course, as, as, a, as a small circle lecture course as well. If I can convey the ideas that I have written down here, uh, in small groups and uh, lecture that to you and, and, and get your feedback as to how uh, clear that is, I think that I will have this uh, publishable ready in uh, relatively short order. So uh, if you'd like to hear, if you'd like to, to wait and get your hands on the book, hopefully it won't be too much longer yet. But if you uh, can't wait and you would like to join me in, in hearing lectures about this, um, then please consider doing that or please consider passing this information on to anybody you know whom 
that might interest. I hope this was interesting to you, and uh, I hope that the next video I make and present to you is also uh, valuable and interesting to you in your learning and studying endeavors. So thank you for listening, and uh, good night.